Marble. Okay. Marble. Somebody decided to wake up early today and join us for the show. Okay, what do we say? You want to do it? You what? do it. What's that ever I come on? Because my name is Jason. Let's go for the right book. Walk away from Walk away from com. The best on your walk away Good. You faded a little down the stretch there, but you got it. Good job. Uh, in case you missed that, that was what's up, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to a Monday edition of Morning Scone, presented by Brooke. Brock Banner's Earth Peak Clinic and HuckCoverRoofing.com. Okay, y'all. Happy Monday. Um, did not go well for LSU baseball on Sunday. Tigers dropped the rubber match to Auburn. They get run rule 12 to two. Uh, let's just be honest, it went very poorly from the very onset. Uh, Christian Little uh, walked the bases loaded, walked in a run, gave up a knock, walked in a run. Uh, they gave up like six in the first, I think on one hit. Um, so, uh, quite honestly, y'all, at the end, boy, it st actually started great. Uh, Gavin Dugas led the game off with a homer. <laughs> it, it feels like a different reality, right? But Gavin Dugas led the game off with a homer. Ellis was leading one nothing. Tommy White doubled. And you're like, all right, here we go. Here we go. Tigers. Going to tear them up here on Sunday. And then Christian Little couldn't throw a strike. So, and then Griffin Herring couldn't throw a strike. And then Gavin Gidry came in. And um, uh, I, look, if there was a highlight, it was Gidry, right? And it was Gidry coming out of the bullpen and, um, and settling in kind of nicely and at least trying to keep it respectable. But um, one of them days, bruh. So I don't think LSU's played that poorly since the game three loss to Tennessee. If you remember... Uh, LSU had won the first, that's the difference, LSU had won the first two that day and then um, gave up a, gave up a six spot to Tennessee in the first and a four spot in the second, they were down 10 nothing. so um, one of them things, man. So flush it, move on. I think mm. there, a lot of you I'm sure are going to ask yeah, the, uh, the legit question, which mm. is, does Christian Little stay I in the Sunday right. rule? And... Um, Probably not, but here's the the kind of the big problem is, I don't know who you put there. So uh, we can walk through that. And, um, um, and, <laughs> what are you looking at? I... Who do you see? Who do you see? Drew. Drew. And then. And then what? Oh, well, after dad's show, we're going to go for a ride at daddy's car. We'll get dressed. We'll go for a ride at daddy's car to the... Oh. Oh, daddy's black car. Or daddy's new car. Daddy's new car. Ooh. Are you so happy? Are you so happy? Yes. Yes. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Look at him smiling. Just cheesing it up for y'all today. Good job. <laughs> hey, you know what? There's a guy who watches. His name is Matt. And today is his birthday. And he wanted you to sing happy birthday yesterday, but you wouldn't cooperate. Do you want to sing happy birthday to Matt? You want to do it? One, two, three. Do it. Happy birthday. Sing happy birthday to Matt. And now you're going to be shy? All right. Okay, let's say some good morning and see what y'all got. Can you sing happy birthday to Matt? Now he gets shot. Well, Matt, if you're watching, I tried. Two days in a row, I tried. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right, Kelly Gross, Dustin Bellello, Trey Potan, good morning. Brant Roban. I'll tell you, I wouldn't be surprised if everyone who faced from here on out uses Auburn's blueprint. Um, flip their order, concede Friday. Yeah. Um, so, Brant, like, that's not a, a new thing, but you got to keep in mind, you got two more weekends left. One of them's against Mississippi State. 
And yo, Mississippi State's atrocious. I don't think y'all really understand if you haven't watched them play. Um, you know, their their staff ERA is nine. Uh, actually, it's almost ten, closer to ten than it is to nine. Um, they are uh, they fired their pitching coach. Um, they're six and eighteen in the conference. Like they're tied with Ole Miss. They're twenty four and twenty three overall. They're terrible. I mean, Mississippi State is absolutely atrocious. So. There really isn't an option to do that this weekend, Brant. And then next weekend, you play Georgia. And we'll talk a little more about Georgia when we get there. But Georgia's second from the bottom in the East at 10 and 14. So, you know, the the thing to your point, Brant, like the reason that teams might do that is if they had somebody that they felt – um was a, a viable starting option that they could flip to Saturday or game two, and it makes sense. Not everybody has that. So that's sort of the difference. And Auburn was content to try to scratch out one because they're still trying to get in a regional, right? That's the big difference there. So not exactly – I'm listen, teams may elect to do it. We've, we saw teams do it against NOLA a couple of times, but – I don't know that everybody's set up to do it, is the point I'm trying to make. Um, let's see. Hey, Dad, good morning. Earl, good morning. Bubba Tatum, good morning. Rough weekend for the Tigers. Announcers made the game more unwatchable than the score did. I'll tell you this, Bubba. Just very being very candid with you all. I turned the game off after the first inning. It was just like the Sunday against Tennessee. I mean, sometimes you know it's just not your day or the, I guess it was Saturday, it was game three against Tennessee. Uh, you know it's not your day. So after the first inning, I took Drew to the mall, and we rode elevators, and then I took him to the park, and I just had a day with Drew. And I was like, I checked in on the game every now and again. But I was like, yeah, that's about right. Like, there are times in this game when it's just not your day, and yesterday was just not LSU's day. Now, we got to talk about, you know, what do you do with Christian Little and – how you manage your, your pitching moving forward, because that's consecutive really rough outings now for Little. He was very bad last weekend against Ole Miss as well, which is unfortunate, man, because the guy we saw get the start against Kentucky, you know, had a great start to the game, nine up, nine down, kind of unraveled. But, you know, I'm not saying Little needs to extend deep into games, but if he can get you nine outs on a, on a Sunday or, you know, a game three, if he can get you nine outs and, and hand the ball off, great. But, I mean, he handed the ball off yesterday without getting an out, um, you know, being down a couple and then you know, and with the bases loaded. So, um, anyway, all right. Uh, let's see. Damon Gilmore, Pat Houston, Tim Gotro. Good morning, Matt. Matt. Matt's watching. Matt Flavel. Well, happy birthday, Matt. Matt, I tried, man. I had him in here. He was even awake today. I tried to get him to sing to you, man. I'm sorry. He didn't want to cooperate. Uh, Greg, good morning. Weston Weaver, Lance Richard. Uh, rough way to close out the weekend. Yeah, man. You know what? Uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about it uh, yesterday watching the game. And, well, the, watching the first inning anyway. And the general melt on Twitter that followed. Because for the rest of the day, I, you know, even though I wasn't watching the game, I'd, I'd open up Twitter uh, from time to time. Um, just check the score or whatever. And... The general melt was, uh, it was interesting because, you know, they, they showed several times over the weekend the graphic that had um, the consecutive weeks at number one in Baseball America and LSU's 12 consecutive weeks, right? And if you watch it. And so there's four teams since, I think it, they put up Arizona State in 1984. So going back to 1984, there's only four teams that have been number one for 13 consecutive weeks. Four. And LSU was about to be the fifth. Well, they probably won't be number one this week. Uh, Wake Forest will probably be number one. But um, it's so... Wait, hang on one second. I'll finish that thought. Hang on. Drew's back. Next week. I'll finish that thought.
Sorry about that. Drew has not been sleeping great the last couple nights. He keeps waking up in the middle of the night getting in our bed. That's... I haven't done that in a long time. Anyway, um... Excuse me. Um, no, so the point I was making is, you know, we've watched this LSU team do something pretty historic, but I think it's hard for fans to to enjoy it because that that sort of borderline per perfection becomes your expectation. Um, and so you lose a weekend. And, like, I literally had people tweeting me, they're not even going to make the Supers. I'm like... Okay, like, let's not be stupid. Um, they just lost a weekend, which literally every team loses a weekend. Um, like, literally every team had lost a weekend in the league. Uh, LSU was the only team that had not lost a weekend. So, anyway, even the tw even the 2013 LSU team that went 23-7, and best record ever in the SEC for an LSU team, that team lost a weekend. Uh, Tennessee last year. The greatest regular season team maybe we've ever seen. They lost a weekend to Kentucky. Everybody loses a weekend. Um, so anyway, sucked. Obviously, you're not hurt in the big picture at all. The question really becomes, uh, what do you do with Sunday? And if we just kind of talk this out a little bit, and I'm sure Jay will get asked that. To Jay's meet with the media today at noon. Um, you know, I think there's a couple of possibilities. You could start Javen Coleman, who's looked pretty good, except for Saturday night. Saturday night was was bumpy for him. Uh, you could start Thatcher Hurd. You could move Hurd back into that role. Although, you know, do you feel like Hurd has settled in? nicely as a back of the bullpen guy, right? Where you put him in the eighth or ninth, try to go close out a game. Then again, that role has suited Gavin Guidry really well to this point. Um, but they brought him out of the bullpen on Saturday as a stopper in the middle innings. He threw, he threw 11 pitches. And then he was the first out of the bullpen yesterday and extended pretty nicely. So... Just judging by how they've used them in the last couple of weeks, and obviously some of that's dictated by situ, a lot of it's dictated by situation and circumstance, but it kind of feels like maybe they give Gidry the day three start and keep Hurd at the end of the bullpen. Because you've seen her try to start and it didn't go great. He's kind of settled in there the last couple of weeks pretty nicely at the end of the game. So anyway, I think those are your probably your options. Coleman, Gidry, or Hurd, if you're going to make a change on the day three starter, which I think they should. Um, my preference would be heard because I think he has the biggest upside as a starter and Gidry has shown you he can close but when we've seen Hurd as a starter this year it's not gone well uh, and Gidry just just did pretty nicely um, and Gidry did start did he start the game against Southeastern on Tuesday I think maybe he, he started against Southeastern um, so maybe that's where they're leaning, is make Gidry that number three guy. Uh, Alex Day, do you think Jay makes a change for Sunday starter? I do. Cajun Country, good morning. <laughs> Say good morning, Drew. What's your favorite place to ride the elevator? Uh, Wendell Norman, read rule, good morning. Sky's not falling. I really think it's time for a little to be done for the weekends. Uh, Gidry, earn the next shot. Todd Holmes, good morning. Tough series after Skeens. Pitching isn't very good. That could be our Achilles heel going forward. Keep up the great work. Well, 
I know everybody's going to say the pitching stinks. I'm going to keep hammering this because I know y'all don't watch other teams play. Or let me rephrase that. I know the majority of you don't watch watch other teams play. Nobody has great pitching. I mean, nobody has three guys like Paul Skeens that run out there. Nobody has anybody like Paul Skeens that runs out there. But um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Christian Little is good, but I'll also tell you, I'll keep reiterating this. When when you get into a regional format, the number of arms that you're going to use is going to shrink. When you get into a postseason format, the number of uh, the number of arms you're going to use is going to shrink. Um, and certainly that's true in Omaha as well. Um. I like Skeens. I thought Ackenhausen heard Friday was a great way to close because you know you feel like you can count on those guys. You can certainly, you know, Floyd as a number two at times has looked really good. I think he certainly established himself as the number two. He fell apart in the fourth, but I think we all agree. That was a weird circumstance with the box and everything that transpired. You'd love to see him get it back together. He just didn't. Um, excuse me, Herring, who walked into a hornet's nest yesterday with the bases loaded and walking in guys, and he walked in two more and then he was done. But you, but Herring's been good all year. You like Herring, you like Gidry, um, you like Coleman, and Riley Cooper has a rubber arm. He pitches, it feels like, every day. You know, so if you need someone just to go run out there, for example, if in the game one of a regional you're up 12 to 2 and you don't want to burn anybody, you got to get through a game, you can run Riley Cooper out there and go get your six, nine outs, whatever. Um, do I wish this team still had Chase Shores and Garrett Edwards? Yes, I do. Because those guys were strike throwers and they were the first guys out of the bullpen. Um so, anyway, um, but I think you have enough arms. You have enough arms to get through the postseason. And I think we can all agree yesterday was a total outlier. Like, even at times when they've not been great, like, giving up six runs and, like, walking in four runs or whatever it was before you recorded out, is still an outlier. Anyway, uh, let me go a little quickly here. I want to make sure I get to y'all. Got about five minutes left. My apologies, going a little slow here. Uh, YouTube, do me a favor, smash that like button. Facebook, please subscribe up to the channel. Not subscribe. YouTube, subscribe. Facebook, please like the Matt Muscota page and share the post. Uh, Robbie White, good morning. In your opinion, is the overall quality of pitching that Cruz has faced in his career better than the quality Todd Walker has faced? You know what, Robbie? Um, I don't know. Um, because I was not, like, as a kid, I certainly was not watching with the, the level of baseball awareness as I am now. Um, but I'm going to have Todd Walker on AFR today, and I will ask him that question. Uh, that's a really good question. I will ask him that question. Tyler Alexander, good morning. Craig Duke, uh, watching the games on Cajunomics feed has become my tradition. Yesterday, the game ended, went to suggested. It was the Whiskey and Wine post care from LSU Alabama football. First 10 minutes is most pure and poetic minutes I've ever seen a wholesome moment of joy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bubba Smith, good morning. Uh, you, T-Bob, I have to tell you something. T-Bob stares into your eyes, <laughs> holds your hands. He's <laughs> like, what, what? I love you, bro. I love you. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> that was so good. Reagan Lee, fine with LSU drop into number two. I know they probably will. With a home loss to Auburn, South Carolina doesn't drop. Why would LSU drop? Um, I don't know, and I really don't care. It maybe has to do with what's behind them or that, whatever. I, rankings, I don't care. Uh, um, it's a nice feather in the cap, but, I mean, I've told you all before, I don't say I don't want LSU to be the one seed. I've watched every one seed since, 19, since 2000, really, uh, not win the national championship, so... Trey Goodwin, more than Matt, in spite of losing weekend, let's not forget. Whoops, there it went. Hang on. 
Let's not forget the real winner is the rant on football creating revenue for everyone. Glad the nerds still don't get it. God. Thank you for watching. David Tolson, the fact the Tigers went this far into the season before losing a weekend series is impressive. No doubt adjustments as the third starter in the rotation. Um, Scott Beckham after skeins, LSU has zero pitchers, team error of 10. Yeah, I just disagree with the no pitchers. Like, we just went through that. I trust Ackenhausen. I trust you know, Herb has been great the past couple times at the back of the bullpen. Griffin Herring was not good yesterday. Obviously, walked into a tough situation, but he's been very good for you all year. You like Gavin Gidry a lot. Javen Coleman coming back off of an injury. That's at least five right there that I can tell you. I'll give them the ball and feel pretty good about it. Um, a lot of guys had rough weekends. Uh, Bryce Collins, though, over the last half dozen outings has been good for you. Um, couldn't locate on Saturday night, but but again, not many people did this weekend. Uh, and you know you can hand the ball to Riley Cooper, who, again, is not an elite pitcher, but as a guy who can throw the ball over the plate and get you some outs in, in the right situation. So you have enough arms, and you have enough good arms to certainly get through it, especially if Skeens paces you through. The, the big difference this weekend is the bats weren't there. I mean, you left 13 guys on base on Saturday. You left the bases loaded three times. If, if you just come through once in one of those situations um, – we're not talking about this. Like LSU wins the series and we're talking about it as a, as a one-off, but they didn't. So we're going to talk about it and I get it. Um, Trey Potan said at this point in the season, the pitching staff is what it is. So Trey, I'll push back a little bit. I want to remind you. This isn't like a month ago, Javen Coleman was not even available, right? A month from now, he could be a guy that starts for you in Omaha, right? At the start of the season, Gavin Guidry wasn't pitching at all. Next Saturday or next Sunday, he could be your number three starter. You know, six weeks ago, Chase Shores and Garrett Edwards were your best arms out of the bullpen. Griffin Herring was a freshman who got some work. You see what I mean? Uh, like, it is a continuous evolution. And if you want to look at past history, I'll point out Trey Hodges. 2000 National Championship season. Trey Hodges was a very inconsistent pitcher throughout that 2000 season. They went to Omaha, and he was awesome. He won MVP of the College World Series. Like, he put it together, figured it out, and was awesome. So, to say it is what it is, I just disagree. Like, I'll also mention 9 Think about what Chad Jones meant to that team down the stretch. Like... He was playing spring football and only came over to baseball after spring football and started to work into a, a rhythm and didn't really start to contribute until like this point of the year. So I, I just disagree with you, man. You still got roles that are evolving. Gavin Guidry's role is evolving. Um, I think we'll see about what they do with Thatcher Hurt if they keep him at the end of the bullpen. Certainly, I would say Guidry... Gavin Guidry and Javen Coleman, both of them, certainly their roles are still evolving right now. Um, oh my goodness, it's 8 o'clock, i got to go. Joel Ensminger, what's going on? <laughs> I think Trey Morgan should play third and pitch on Sundays. <laughs> Thank you for the levity, Joel, I appreciate it. Randall Offrecht, what's going on? Sorry for all those I missed. Man, there's a ton of comments I missed, and obviously after they lose a series like that. There's going to be a bunch, and, and I'm just late. But I got to go, and I got to get Drew ready for, for school. So, um, um, Shelby, Auburn played their best ball all year, possibly their worst series all year. You could have won Saturday. How often is that going to happen? Not often. Uh, Nyquilis, what's going on? Totally agree. Pitching is constantly losing and gaining guys. The only steady is Skeens and Little's inconsistency. You know what? But even still... Uh, yeah, the rest of the staff, not what it was they won. Think about what your rotation was the opening weekend of the season. Um, you know, Hurd was your was your midweek guy. Uh, the opening weekend, do you remember the opening weekend? They went Skeens, Riley Cooper, two, and...
I gotta remember who started game three. They went Skeens, Cooper, and Chase Shores. Your opening weekend rotation this season was Skeens, Cooper, Shores. On that game three, Shores went three and a third. Dutton went two thirds of an inning. Ty Floyd out of the bullpen gave you three innings and got the win. And then Blake Money finished it. I didn't even mention Blake Money, who I don't know that's a guy you, want to, you really count on tremendously, but it's another arm there that's pitched him for you. Anyway, so yes. Um, The pit pitching is, is a constant evolution. Okay, I got to go, y'all. My apologies. Um, I know there's a lot I missed. Let me bounce. Brock, Hudco, need an orthopedist. Brock, need a roof. All the awful weather on Saturday. Give a shout, Hudco. Hudco's pinned in the chat. Click the link. Fill out the form on the homepage. Someone will call you, like, instantly. Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Of course, Restored Motions and Procharge EV. Have an awesome day. We'll see you. Peace.